Hey Remarkable Lifers, this is Craig. And this is KJ. And we've recorded this six times trying to get it right. <laughs> so, bear with me because today we're going to do a viewer request. We had someone ask us, what kind of things did you bring when you came here and what would you have not brought? They watched our earlier video about the things that we packed, how we packed, and how we came here. But now 10 months in, what are we looking back at? And, and what they also want to know, what do you wish you would have brought that you didn't bring? Right. So we're going to talk about that today. First, we're going to look at this in a couple of different angles. Number one, we the way we chose to move was a little bit different than the way someone else might choose to move. Some people pack their entire homes up and ship it all down here. Some people come here in a suitcase. We were somewhere in between. Um, we had a van uh, that was transporting we, us with our dog. We were more towards the suitcase end. Yes, we were more towards the suitcase end. <laughs> Couldn't have gotten on a plane, but we know we could. Were, it was close. Um, but we had our suitcases. We had a couple of random little pieces of furniture, and we had a about mm, eight. Tubs. Yeah, eight eight plastic tubs and. Well, Maybe six or seven suitcases. Yeah, chock full. Chock I mean, full, yeah. KJ packed it as a solid. You've heard us talking about that before. It was a thimble inside of a teacup inside of a, you know. So, all wrapped up in a towel. <laughs> yeah, and all of our clothes used as packing. And so it was a very interesting unpacking. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what, first of all, we're glad we brought. Yes. So number one, when you come down here, one of the misconceptions is, is that, oh, I can just go out and buy everything again. I'll sell everything and go buy everything again. That is true for, to an extent. To an extent. Um, some things are much more expensive because they just don't well, make them here, so they're imported. And there's in, and there's importation tariffs on yeah. things. Yeah, so, so you may go to buy something and it's just so much more expensive or the same price as what you would pay in the United States, whereas most things here are a little bit cheaper based on the exchange rate. So. I've got a notepad here. I'm going to cheat during this. He video. made a list, y'all. He made a <laughs> list. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> I'm beyond. <laughs> okay. So number one, I had one prerequisite when we moved here. One thing. And it was, yeah, see, ding. <laughs> I was bringing my Le Creuset pan. I had a newer Le Creuset pan that I'd been wanting for my whole life. Um, it's one of the Dutch oven. It's the beautiful blue color. We went through heck and back to get it. And I just felt like it would be very important to bring here. Um, and I wanted to keep it. And it would be very expensive to replace. So I was committed to carrying it on my lap on a plane if they would have let me do that. But fortunately, I didn't have to. Um, to let you know, that's one of the things that has been indispensable here yes we use it constantly you can bake it and it's so multi-purpose at the top of the stove everything it is wonderful so that was one of mine what was one of yours um oh my gosh why would you put me on the spot like that um, because it's fun on video <laughs> what was uh, the dog that yes. was my that, that was my big um absolute gotta go um and so for me so we had it. No, you got your Dutch oven. No, <laughs> I brought crypto. <laughs> well, I knew you had crypto, so I I was able to go get my Dutch oven. So I wouldn't have left crypto. With the Dutch I mean, oven. it's it's kind of difficult, um, you know, because there's um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's uh, you know, I mean, I have to have you know, like my laptop mm -hmm. and um, electronic stuff so i mean you know we're youtubers so we needed to make sure that we had our our camera our, our cameras our phones our equipment our chargers all of that sort of electronic sort of stuff mm -hmm. and you and speaking of which you kind of have to be careful when you're bringing that stuff across the border because uh mexico is really wanting to make sure you're not bringing stuff that's new into the country that you yeah. intend to resell so um let's talk about some of the things that we're glad we brought um, number one, my Le Creuset, you know that, but I also brought my big chili stock pot with a copper bottom because I love to make chili. I love to make, um, what? I remember my, my one I had to bring. <laughs> Mixina. Oh, Mixina. Mixina. You haven't met Mixina. Mixina is my, yeah. is my cobalt blue KitchenAid stand mixer. That he got for Valentine's Day and his birthday. He got from birthday, birth and like time. Years, Day. years and years ago. But. KJ's birthday is like right before Valentine's Day and then there's Valentine's Day and so he we have created a birthday holiday for him 
he did it. Called Val- Birthentine's Day. Yeah. So this was his Birthentine's Day present one time. <laughs> so. But anyway, we'll show you that. Um, also, we brought our knife, a couple of knives. We brought our favorite mugs, which we can't show you because they're highly branded. Um, we bought our silverware. Now, that was one of my requirements because I've had the silverware. I'm going to show you my silverware had the silverware for 25 years. It is the perfect weight. It is not overly ornate. It matches everything. It is just the most comfortable thing to use. I love it. And they pack nice and neatly when you stack them. And it was easy to bring. Now, that was based on the fact that we were doing over the ground transports. I wouldn't have tried to bring that on a plane. But a <laughs> few things like that. Then we brought bedding and quilts and towels and um, and that's something that's actually very, that's actually very important here. If you um, have the ability to bring bedding, and if you like your fluffy towels from the U.S. or Canada or whatever, the towels here are not that fluffy like you're used to. Yeah. Uh, the thread counts on your sheets are not that high. So, but know where you're going to live. That's correct. The first lesson here: if you're renting someplace that's fully furnished, or if you're buying a house that's furnished, you may not need everything. That's correct. That's your first consideration. We were renting here on purpose with uh, a lot of furnishings already here. We knew we'd have to get a few things. So we kind of packed accordingly based on what we knew was in the house. Yeah. Um, but what I will say is that bedding, specifically, beds are different size here. So you do have like matrimonial queen and matrimonial size. Yeah. and th- Just research that. I'm not going to go into all that no. right here because I'm not the expert. We also brought... Medicines, um, shoes, extra clothes, electronics, our favorite photos, our dog, of course, and our medical equipment and things like that. So um, I want to show you a couple of things that I'm really glad I brought um, when it comes to household items. Um, Number one, we brought a toolkit. Crucial. This is absolutely crucial because no matter whether you rent or you own, if your switch plate breaks on your, you're, you're going to go it. get one and fix it. If, yeah. you're, if a screw comes out of your door, you're going to fix it. So right. you're going to have to have a few things like that. Plus furnishings or things that you buy might need to be put together. Um, and, you know, you can get those tools, but tools are not super cheap here. So right. um, bring yourself a toolkit. Um, number 743328B. <laughs> so bring things that mean a lot to you that will make you feel like you're at home because or that make you have a nice memory. Don't bring things that you can replace like, you know, oh, I love that lamp. Well, you can buy lamps by the dozen down here. Unless you really, so, really, really love the unless lamp. Unless it was grandma's yeah. lamp or you have a special memory or it's a yeah. very special one, but not if it's just some Walmart. Um, and then I brought, this is a little cheese board that my sister-in-law bought for me. I hope there's not a glare. But the brand, uh, it was a fortuitous because the brand was a very special wine for me. Um, and then we also brought like our books of our homes that we lived in before we had that we remodeled um, our realtor made these for us but i would suggest considering doing this this is a very very good thing to do so you can see it's got you know all of our photos of our our real estate photos but it's a nice memory to have and it was an easy way to bring them and then we brought a few Special photos, our wedding photo. I'm sure you're getting a glare. Um, and you get plenty of frames here, so you can yes. just bring the photos. Just pack your photos yeah. neatly and bring those along. Um, you can also have things framed here relatively and expensively. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a big thing to note. Um, things that, like other things, would be a, a robot vac we brought. I wish I'd have brought the regular vacuum instead. Instead? You, uh, two. Two. I wouldn't want to give up my robot back, but <laughs> I really, really needed a vacuum cleaner for the and, and it's just that's they're not that cheap here. So um extra clothes. We brought, you know, unused packages of underclothes and t shirts and some extra shoes and those kind of things. Invaluable. Bring those because especially if you're from the United States and you are a larger size. Costco here, you know how Costco in the States, it's like you can't buy larger than an XL. Here it's medium. Okay, so. (laughs) You can get large. You can get large. You might have to go to different stores. Your choices are going to be limited. Shoes, if you're over 9, 10, 11, you're going to start having trouble getting them. And bigger sizes, forget it. You're going to have to order those. 
So that's important. Um, also, don't don't forget to bring like a hiking shoe because the roads here, especially in Ahihik and the sidewalks and everything, are very different. So I brought tennis shoes that would have lasted me a year, and they were worn out in three months. So we ended up investing in some really good hiking shoes, and they were wonderful. Yeah, they work. They work great on the cobblestone streets here. So. Yeah, so now I would do want to mention some things we did not bring. So we did not bring large furniture and things in our home. Correct. Uh, like furnishings. But if you're planning to come here, bring, and you're going to bring big furniture, bring the soft items. Bring your couches. Bring those kind of things. Don't, bring, don't worry about wooden furniture unless it's very special to you. You can have wooden furniture built here very inexpensively. Relatively inexpensively. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, relatively. I mean, you're going to pay less than you would pay for a nice piece in the states yeah. to have it built. But if you got um, like a nice, if you got a nice lazy boy recliner or a nice lazy boy reclinable, you know, sofa or something like that, yeah. bring those. Uh, something else. Mattresses here are they're just different. You know, aside from the size thing, um, they're just made differently. So if you have a really good bed at home um, and you're planning on bringing your whole household full of stuff, bring your bed. Yeah, seriously. Um, we miss our bed. Mm -hmm. but our house came with a bed, so we're just kind of living with it. We're making do. Um, yeah, but <laughs> we're probably going to have to do something. Maybe. Ah, yes. So don't bring, what I would suggest is not to bring all of your like piles and piles of family photos from the 1990s. Um, all the old paperwork that you think you should keep. Do some research and find out what you need to keep. Um, absolutely, and then have it digitized, or you digitize it. So you scan your photos in, you there are services that do it, um, you can pay somebody, you can do it slowly over time. It's unless you're moving your entire household, if you're trying to stay small. And remember, I'm going to jump in real quick. Yes. Remember, if you're moving your entire household here, that is a completely different process than what we went through. Yes. There is a thing called a menaje de casa, you're going to have to have a customs broker, it is a much, much more in detailed and in-depth procedure. Yes. Um, look in the description below. There's a link for um, the Mexico Relocation Guide. That is an invaluable resource. It has a list of custom brokers and all that kind of stuff in there. They can help you out if you're thinking about doing it. We've had nothing but good luck with using resources from the Mexican Relocation Guide. Yeah, but just remember if you're... It, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, said it wrong. Oh, just remember, if you are moving your entire household... It's a completely different process that we didn't go through. Yeah, know that process. Yeah. But again, this might help you determine what to bring and what not to bring if you're paring it down. Right. So um, I want to just retouch on some points that I would encourage you to bring. If you're larger sizes, bring your clothes. Bring your bring extra clothes, bring extra shoes. If you um, Or have a plan to go back and get them. Um, do not bring controlled or illegal substances across the border. Now, when I say that, there are certain medications that you can, you know, that's different. Controlled your, substances that are prescription yeah. is fine. Just bring your prescription with you. But please don't try to bring anything that's questionable across the border. You will get stopped. No matter, no matter, even if it is something that is legal in the state that you're coming from, it is not legal to bring across the border in Mexico. I'm talking about marijuana. He's trying to right. dance around it. Um, he's trying to dance around it. <laughs> Do not bring weed, pot, marijuana, whatever you want to call it. Do not bring that or any other. paraphernalia or any other kind of illicit drugs. Just yeah. don't do it. So you need to. You, what you want to do is you really want to research the government. Um, that that's another disclaimer in here. Make sure that you're checking out the Mexico government websites. What is and is not allowed to be brought in. Yes. It changes from time to time. So. You know, apply some common sense. Um, yeah. Bring your spices. You can bring your kitchen spices. Some people say yes. you, some people believe that you can't. Um, if you're bringing in a full um, household of things, there are some custom brokers that don't want to deal with it. So they'll tell you that they will not bring in your spices. It doesn't mean that you can't. It means they don't want to deal with it. Right. There's a big difference. So, yeah. Um, I would say to go through your house as if you are trying to replace everything and think about what's going to be the biggest pain to replace and the base, biggest expense. If you're looking for, you know, spatulas and flippers for your kitchen, you can get them, you can get a million of them down here. Dishes, we are, especially here, we're 
just a hop, skip, and a jump from Tonala, where you can buy, you know, beautiful Mexican dishes. Or you can run down to Walmart. Prices. And we have a Walmart. You can get something standard. Yeah. Um, so you might not want to bring them unless they're very special. They might not survive the process anyway right. of moving because that's a big move. So, you know, those are some things to keep in mind. But also, the there is the intangibles. So I want to talk about real quick the intangibles about bringing. I would say before you come here, if you have an opportunity, get yourself a tutor and with that is native Mexican speaking Spanish, Spanish speaking, and ask them to teach you to walk how to walk around the streets and ask for things, how to go to a store, how to pay your electric bill. Those are the phrases that you need. You don't necessarily need to start learning the entire structure of the language if you don't have time, but learning those key phrases about how to interact with people and how to buy things is invaluable. Yes. Number two, I'll let you take this one first. Bring an open mind. Bring an open mind and a sense of adventure. Yes. <laughs> Nothing you see here is going to be the same as what you see in the States or in Canada. It's just not. Even if it is the same in, in theory, things are going to be done a little bit different or there's going to be something that makes you go, hmm, huh? that's different. <laughs> yeah. So it's important. Bring your open bring an open mind and a sense of adventure because you're you're leaving for reasons and you're coming here for uh, and you're coming here for reasons. Don't think that you can come here and recreate where you left. No. You don't want to. And and embrace those differences and look at ask why. Ask people why. Why yeah. is this different? Um, because there are reasons. We've found many things that are very different. We're like, oh, wow, well, why is this this way with my house? And then you find out, oh, why? that has to be, you know, like our ahibe is inside because then it doesn't get hot and it doesn't melt in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a different weather. You know, it's a different kind of climate. Things. It's different everything. And so things are just different. Yeah. You know, so bring your open mind. And also bring an interest in the Mexican culture. Yes. That's my last piece of advice. Um, be open to learning, talk to locals, have those conversations. If you are excited about learning their culture, let me tell you, they are excited to share it with you. The Mexican culture is very, very rich and they're very proud of it and they should be. And you will learn so much and it will just be eye opening. Yes. Just bring that and embrace it. Yes. So just a quick recap. So when packing to move to Mexico, it depends on one big thing. What level of move you're going to make. If you just want to pack a suitcase, then don't forget to bring all your real important paperwork or your real important documents and maybe a one special item and then <laughs> pack yourself up and come down here. If you're doing that in-between move and you're trying to sort things out, you're going to need to be real, real uh, discriminating in what you bring. So make sure you bring those things that are meaningful to you, but not the stuff you can replace. Pictures, no frames. You know, your special dish, not all your dishes. Your, you know, favorite chili pot, but not your entire set of pans. Those kind of things will make it a lot easier for you. The last piece is, if you're moving your entire household, if you're moving everything, great. More power to you. But I've seen so many people get down here and realize they didn't need it all. Because their house did not accommodate it. Um, or... They had it already because they bought a property with furniture that was furnished, or that, they're renting something. That was furnished. That's something that I really didn't want to bring up. It's when, before you go through all of this, understand whether you're renting or buying, and if you are getting a house that is furnished already. That's the big. That's the big thing, you know. Because what are you going to have when you get here? Yeah, ask you for know, a walkthrough. Ask, ask for, for a walkthrough. Walk ask video. them to show you the furniture. Ask for them to show you the, you know, if you're getting the dishes or a coffee pot or whatever's important to you. Yeah. Ask them to show you. Because if you're, you know, if you've got a coffee pot at the house that you're moving into, you don't need to bring your coffee pot. Anything. And the, you, or you can make that choice, you know, yeah. if you know. So those are the big things. And then also, you know, really, really encourage everybody to bring, I don't care where you're living in Mexico, bring a good pair of shoes like a nice pair of hiking shoes. Bring extras. And bring extras. <laughs> buy, buy two pair. Um, and bring your extra you know, necessity items, um, such as underwear, socks, those kind of things, if you're a larger size. If you are a smaller size, you're covered. All you're fine. Yeah. 
So the one thing that I wish I had brought with me that I did not bring was all of my friends and family. Oh, that's the biggest thing I miss. And so, you know, make yourself a plan to be able to go back and visit when you can. Um, stay in touch and make make efforts to keep in touch with people. Yeah, that's really important. So, I hope this has helped. And if you haven't already, go find your truly remarkable life. Thanks. Check out all of our links down below and subscribe and like and share and do all Hit that, that stuff. Hit that bell. And bump. And, yeah, and all that. You know, that's it. <laughs>